I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who wanna share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. Happy to introduce to you today, Darren Pinkerton, who's come up from Southern Utah, kind of, and mm -hmm. appreciate you coming up and sharing your story with us. Well, thank you for having me, Earl. Yeah. I appreciate it. You actually weren't one of those born in the church, is that right? No, or what no. What was your background a little bit? I was, well, I, I guess I was, I was born into a... Uh, I don't know, Protestant isn't evangelical. Yeah. Um, grew up uh, going to church every week. Really? Um, since I was a little kid that I could remember, sitting in pews and listening to pastors. And uh, um, I had the typical kind of, I don't know, Protestant Christian background. Protestant yeah. upbringing. Huh? Yeah. Where was, was this at? This was in Missouri. Was it? And I spent... Was this near the church stuff uh, in uh, Missouri? Or no, no, the, no. Uh, independence I, and all that stuff? That's probably, I'm guessing, maybe... I don't know, it's close to us now by Kansas City. So that's about a three, three and a half hour drive. Oh, so okay. about maybe three hours or so, I guess. Okay. Were you aware of Mormons during your growing up time? When I grew up, uh, when I, anytime I heard Mormon, I always would hear family talk about the guys in the shirts and ties. Oh, the missionaries. The missionaries yeah. knocking on doors. Yeah. But it was never anything good. You know, oh. I always heard, be cautious, don't talk to them. You know, um, yeah. if you're outside, you see them. You know, it's, and so, but I never really met too many growing up. Oh. It just wasn't, um, maybe it's just our paths never crossed. Yeah. Um, but your parents were active Christians? Active, yeah. T were and still are. Oh, are they? Yep. And so it's, um, it's been kind of, it, it, different, I guess. But yeah, I started out with going to church and, you know, reading the Bible and, you know, Sunday school, all that vacation Bible school, that whole thing, you know, and that was just how my life started. An interesting perspective because so many of us that were born in the church, that's all we knew right. was our Mormon upbringing right. and, and how difficult it was to leave that when yeah. we kind of yeah. see things differently. Yeah. Um, so did you feel like you... Do, do you or a lot of kids rebel or kind of get complacent or do you have the same human characteristics that some of us Mormons did when we were growing up? I would say, yeah, I, I would yeah, say there's pretty similarities. Typical, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, if you look at the kind of belief, I guess, I mean, there's differences there, but I mean, the way, you know, I was raised in a pretty strict family yeah. and, um, you know, there were things you couldn't do and just didn't, didn't do, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so um, there's a lot of some similarities there. So I never really... I don't know if I really necessarily rebelled. I probably did. Well, I uh, no, no, but I mean, yeah, some, yeah. some, you know, some way I, I okay. did. Don't want to go to church today. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah. Usually until until I got old enough to get out of the house, yeah. uh, I never was allowed to say that. Yeah. So, <laughs> excuse me. Well, what was your thoughts about Jesus growing up? Um, I uh, growing up, I guess my what I was taught taught that Jesus died for us. You know, He yeah. died for uh, our sins. Um, and um, were you, you know, in? We we'll use the words yeah. in awe of God. Were you? No, I grew up. Your... I grew up fearing God. Fearing God. Fearing God. It, God was something that was, you know, way up high, and I lived in fear because I heard that a lot. You know, unfortunately, where I, where you know where we went to church, yeah. God was kind of um, 
Yeah, like you didn't you you didn't necessarily want to cross his path. cross his path because you know he it was a lot of a lot of unfortunate a lot of damnation and stuff that I heard. Oh, so yeah, so that I was, was afraid kind of, of that upbringing. Yes, yes. So how you go through school and what happens after high school? Um, I go through school um, and then I don't know. I, I graduated from school um, and I let's see. Eventually, I I moved away. Yeah. From where I the the state I was in and, and moved to uh, moved away to another state and uh, lived there for several years mm. and um, that that's kind of I just and I never really I mean I had some churches I went to up there you know yeah, yeah. made some really good friendships you know really had some really good good Christian people yeah um, just to kind of talk with and uh, so how does Mormonism come into your life okay that I would say was probably it's been six over six years now I had come back um, went back to Missouri and uh, there were some really kind of uh, rough things that happened in my life mm. and that kind of caused me to go back there and um, I went back pretty much a wreck um, mm. in a lot of ways mm -hmm. and um, unfortunately um, when I went back I just um, was kind of going in different directions, you know, I was kind of like splitting myself, you know, <laughs> if I physically could, if I would have went in so many directions, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually, I was just kind of a wreck. And, and so, um, I had, um, ran across someone else, um, through a group, through kind of a, kind of a group of people, um, that we were talking and talking about church and God and all that. And, and this individual said, well, you know, said something about being a Mormon or something. And I'm they like, were Mormon. they were Mormon. Oh, okay. And I'm like, I've, you know, tell me a little bit about you guys because, you know, I mean, this is what I've heard, but tell me what you, you know. What do you believe? Yeah, what do you what believe and what's the thing? Yeah. And so we talked for a little bit and then they said, well, why don't we... Um, Get the missionary. Yeah, I said, <laughs> I, have, I have someone I introduced you or some couple guys yeah. I introduced you to and I was like, yeah. okay, it's these guys in the shirts and ties. Okay. And so we met, um, actually we went to the, um, I guess the the church um, one one evening. I met, we met them all there and... They just sit down and talked and, you know, they were like, what do you, you know, what do you believe? And I kind of told them a little bit where I come from, you know, and these guys were, you know, from all over the country. And um, we just kind of talked and he's like, well, have you ever read the Book of Mormon? And I'm like, no, I've heard about it, you know. And they're like, well, it kind of is a companion to the Bible. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay. You know, I mean, and I, I try to, I've always been the kind of person, hopefully, that I give somebody the benefit of the doubt or I try to believe or, you know, be respectful and listen and just think, well, you know. I was sitting there going, I, I don't know if I'm really buying, but... But their but, story was that the Book of Mormon was something you should read. Yeah, kind a of... Companion yeah, a companion, Bible. you know. It just it was kind of like Another magnifying, yeah, yeah. You know, like, here's the Bible, but this is kind of like a, yeah. a spotlight to it in a way. Is way he kind so of, he kind of told it. So then they some of the other lessons, too? Yeah. yeah. He, they give me a Book of Mormon, and, you know, I like to read, so it was like something I was like, okay. And so I just kind of tore into it and just started reading. Yeah. And it really was kind of like, I don't know, I was probably halfway through it and I found myself just, um, first I thought, man, am I, I'm reading another version of the King James Bible, the way the wording was, <laughs> yeah. you know? And I was, I was, I was, that's one thing I was just like, oh, okay, okay, I'll, I'll keep going. And so, you know, I read through and, and um, you know, they kind of tell you, they give you a, whatever it is in a, Moroni or somewhere, you know, you pray about this or, you know, whatever they, Moroni, let me challenge you. 10, to, four, five. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm, and I'm like, and I read that and I was like, okay, but. So did you pray about it? No. I, oh, no, I gotta be honest, no. No, I mean, I, I was just, I mean, I, I read it, but I mean, I always prayed, yeah. but I didn't like specifically say, you know. Is this Book of Mormon? Is really? this, yeah, I, I was just like, you know, God's, you know, I, I, I myself, God, it's, you know, speak to me, show me, you know, whatever you have for me, I guess. Yeah. And, um, and then after that, I mean, through that period while reading, you know, I was meeting some of the missionaries and, you know, we were talking, they were kind of just teaching me and, um, you know, really nice young man, you know, very, very, um, very friendly. I've never really come across very many that, that weren't friendly, you know, they just really, right. you know, kind of, and I think at that point in my life, one, one thing I want to add to is I think I was in, excuse me, a really rough spot in my life. And I think... So this came along at a it, good it, time. It did. I think it was it was the the thing that I I was needing like kind of some friendship in a way because I've spent a lot of time alone and it was just it was kind of it was just very rough. And so here was a couple of young guys that said, "Hey, let's talk," you know, and we we would visit and you know, kind of you know meet different places and just sit and talk. And you know, obviously we talk about the Book of Mormon, we talk about the Bible, and I always tried to want to include something with the Bible, you know, when we'd talk about the Book of Mormon. Really. 
And so they would always, you know, just sit there. Yeah, yeah. And we would, you know, I would have my Bible with me and we'd open stuff up. And and, and they um, say, we, we believe in the Bible. Too, oh, totally, right? yeah. totally, totally. It was like, oh, we believe, we, you know, believe this. Well, you were sensing that the church was important or true or um, I don't see, had something to offer? I have something to offer because I think there was a lot of, like, friendship there. Yeah. You know, like, people were, you know, when I started going yeah. to services, um, people were super friendly. Like, people would invite me over for dinner. Oh, yeah. You know, and just well, when you're an investigator, know, yeah. that's very typical. Yeah, isn't it, you know, friendship. Over yeah. Now, I mean, did you share this with your folks? Or is no, I never did. You know, this was something that I always just kept internally, hmm. um, because I knew. Looking back now, do you think what if you had said something, or looking would back, they have given you some information, maybe that? No, I think they would have. They would. They would have probably just supported. I don't think so. Oh. Okay. No, no, I don't. I, I think. Okay. I think. If anything, they probably would have went off the opposite and went. <laughs> what are you thinking? Are you? Yeah. You know. And maybe kind of. You know. Maybe in a way, knock some sins into me. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but you eventually get baptized. Yeah. 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 You know, there's some things I look back on and and you know, um, really think, man, you know. I guess the, it was just the people. It was the people, you know, the people were kind. Um, mm. Some of the nicest people I truly have met. And right. growing up in church, um, oh, you know. They're wonderful. They, they're wonderful, yeah. you know, and, and just so inviting and friendly and, you know, and all this. And it was, I guess it was what I needed in that time of my yeah. life. And um, I just and, found community there. Yeah, and you eventually, you go through a process of getting ready to go to the temple. Yes, And, and you yes. go to the temple. yes. Uh, yeah. How was that preparation, and what were you anticipating the temple to provide? More I, answers, or no? I did just, you feel like you were getting answers to gospel questions at this point? I, I think, I, yeah, I think I was kind of maybe getting some answers, but I don't, I can't really name any one particular. Yeah. It's been long enough that I couldn't remember what I was really getting. I just know that yeah. um, I had all these people that were really encouraging and supporting me and saying, "Oh, this is good. You need to do this. You need, you know." And I'm like, okay, okay. Same with the temple, too. I Same guess. with this. Yeah, yeah. It was so just what like, did you think about the temple? Um, uh, probably my first, my first thought was, where's the exit door? Oh, really? To be honest with you, I was like, I was like. <laughs> Even I, though you'd prepared and, yeah. and probably prayed and encouraged yeah. yourself to go to the yeah. temple, that's yeah. the way you felt. I, yeah, well, because I, I guess while, while I was sitting in there, what went through my mind to a lot, my mind was really racing that day and I remember thinking if you know um, what do they have on the you know the temple the holiness or this is holiness something to the Lord. Yeah, yeah I thought you know and they and they talk about the like the Lord walking amongst in the temple or something you know I was told that a lot and I thought you know as I sit there I thought the way I was raised you know I, I thought you know you know Jesus was always with us you know and or his Holy Spirit you know and within us within us yeah. you know you know and we're and, the temple of yeah, God. yeah yeah and and I thought why do I necessarily need to come somewhere to 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 find the Lord, I guess, yeah. and so, um, but I, I mean, I still did it, and you know, and I, I get it. I had some great people with where me. Where was this at? Which temple? that was in uh, the Nauvoo Temple. Wow, the Nauvoo Temple. Oh, yeah, I, I guess got to. It's new now. I don't. Yeah, know. It, it was, and it, it was, you know, everything was beautiful, beautiful and very beautiful. Yeah. I never probably been in a place in my life a building so beautiful. Sure. You know, and so it was really. I mean, well, they it, appeal to the to the instincts that we all have don't, yeah. don't they i mean they, yeah the, the beauty and the camaraderie and it the does. fellowship and everything it and, does but you were kind of alone here were you I oh mean, yes I mean, yeah you, you had friends and i had friends but you weren't uh, married at this point no the the path was the path was very lonely yeah. and i think that um you know when you walk it alone but when you have people there encouraging you you know and kind of just you know befriending you that yeah. it, it i guess it was easier to walk yeah. you know when you didn't feel alone well, now back to your comment about exiting the temple. Yeah. What was it exactly that? Was it just the the ritual of it, or yeah. the, the symbols, or the, I mean, you, did you know about masonry at all in the temple? I, yeah, I knew some at that point. At that, the, yeah, at that point, but I didn't know a ton. Yeah, I didn't. You know, I don't think I was like I'd really searched it. Yeah, but I knew a little bit because I had friends that had been masons, oh. and so, but you know, they never said of anything on what goes on or what they do. But you know, I'm a mason. Or whatever, but you, you know? just sensed it was just. I, yeah, it was. It seemed very godlike, maybe, no, or something. Yeah, since there was probably, an, I would say, related to like an energy. You yeah. know, there was a different energy there, yeah. and I'm and not necessarily a good energy. You know, even as a good active member that I was, I always sensed the temple had a different spirit or a yeah. different um, something, yeah, a nuance or yes. something that was just a little different. Yes. And, uh, 
not bad, but just right. different. Just so, different. Yeah. 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 I won't, I won't necessarily say it was bad. I mean, yeah. I just say it was just different. different. That's the best word to describe it because I, I, you know, I was like, okay. And you know, the people that were with me, you know, were very helpful and, and, yeah. you know, and, uh, and I was just, you know, kind of just along for the ride trying to understand it. Now, you were reading more and more, studying more about the church. I know you mentioned it earlier yeah. that you'd read the Book of Mormon a couple of times. A couple of times. So you must have felt some connection to it at all. Yeah, or? yeah. I mean, I, did you start reading, though, about, I mean, did anyway. Yeah, I, I, I started you, reading a lot of things. Other things. I mean, yeah. Doctrine and Covenants. Doctrine and Covenants. Sort of um, uh, Pearl of Great Price. Right. Yeah. Um, I just really kind of, you know, I'm the type of person... Like when I, it's like when I believe something or, or I'm trying to learn to understand it, I just throw myself into it. Yeah. I think I'm just one of these 100% people. You know, I have a hard time dividing that up. Now, did you have a, do you feel like you had a foundation in the Bible? Um, As a, growing up and, and what your experiences were before? I mean, did you feel like you had an yeah. understanding of grace and um, I, were, uh, Paul's teachings? And I think I had a foundation, Jesus. but I don't know how deep it was. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how solid. Right. Um, even though growing up in church, going to church, you know, reading your Bible, whether it was mandatory or not, yeah. um, there's that point where I think I, yeah, I, I understood it, yeah. but sometimes you just don't really know it. Did you, you sense know? that we were, you were dealing with the same Jesus and God and, no. well, and I, Mormonism? When I first started out, I thought it was, in a way. Yeah. And when you start the out. the Book of Mormon almost sounds almost. a little Christian, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it does. I mean, you're like talking you say, the, the King Savior. James Version mm -hmm. and all that stuff, yeah. Yep, I totally, you know, was like uh, thinking, yeah, okay, okay, this is, but it didn't take too long after. Well, that's what I was to wondering. Get into it. So you started sensing. Started sensing that, you know, when, when the first time I heard that, you know, Jesus was our spirit brother. And that was like a radar, you know, it was like, you just, it goes off and you're like, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've never read this in the Bible. I don't care what version I've read. I've never, you know, <laughs> that one never came up. That one never came up. Um, and so that, that was probably, that was probably another one, um, or a, a big one for me. Cause I, I never bought that, that Jesus and, and, you know, Satan were, were spirit brothers and we're all. And did you ever sense, uh, and, and probably through the temple, I don't know if it actually comes out and says it. Mm -hmm. I don't think it does, but yeah. that we can become a God. Did you ever? Oh, I, yeah, I did hear that too. I don't remember in temple wise, but I yeah. remember hearing that too as I sit and you did know. Did that strike you? Yes, that one too. Yeah, that one too. That was that was probably it was probably Jesus. And yeah, I've been trying to think like in order of when, but that was probably a, another big one because I'm like, you know, it says in the Bible, you know, there's can... there's one God, there's no other God, there's no other gods before me, no other gods after I don't me, you know. know. Any other yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, wait a minute, I didn't know we I can, can become, become a, a, a God, you know. My thought too was like, I don't want to become a god. I don't want to become, you know, I mean, I'm, so I'm a child of God. Yeah. I don't want to become God. God, yeah. you know, I, that wasn't appealing to me. And it. Now, did you ever yeah. share any questions or concerns you had with a bishop? Or yes, I, I spoke with the the bishop several times, and um, we had um, some really, I don't know. I think I really, in a, in a fun way, trying to make it light. I think I really worked him. You know, I mean, I think I really made him think. Yes, really. Yes, because yeah. I, I come with a lot of questions. You know, pretty just like, hey, I don't understand this. Can you, you know? Now he understood your background as a Christian, yes. so he was. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. he was. I, I believe he was very well aware of where I come from. I yeah. mean, you know, cause we we talked several times. So what did you pose to him? <clears throat> I just, I know, I asked him about you the. You know, we talked about, you know, kind of where I'd come from, and you know, he was kind of explaining what some of these, you know, whether it's Protestants or another, I don't know, kind of denominations, why they're sort of like name like this or where they come from or why their beliefs are the way they are. And that in, you know, Joseph Smith's time, this is, you know, Joseph's seen all this and, you know, this is where, you know, he decided the to... restoration. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was more like kind of, um, I feel like sometimes it was more like kind of dismissive, like when I'd come to something, you know, that was maybe too tough to answer or didn't want to think about. You know, I've thought about that whole problem a lot, having been a bishop, plus also just just in what we're doing now. Yeah. I just have a sense that Mormons have such a thin understanding of the Bible, probably, as you say, even the Book of Mormon and all, yes. but they're encouraged to read the Book of Mormon, but yes. their understanding of the Bible is so thin, Yes. even as a higher level authorities, that when you ask them a question, they really don't have much more beyond their basic no. Little few scriptures and things. They don't really. They don't know Greek or Hebrew. I mean, right. they don't analyze and take things in right. in context. No, you're right. So, I, what became kind of a, a tipping point for you, or? I th I don't know. I think I, the more I read, or, you know, I got online. I wasn't necessarily looking to um, condemn anything or yeah. anyone. 
Yeah. I really wasn't. And but I think the more I got online, trying to prove the church true. Um, I guess in a way, or not necessarily prove it true for myself, but you know, I've, I heard a lot of bad things growing up, yeah. and so I was kind of saying, okay, don't you know? Let's not call groups of people certain things if we don't know that's it, or it's no call names at all. Okay. You know, don't this label. is you don't, don't label. label. <laughs> if this is what they believe, it's what they believe. Yeah. And I guess I kind of did it for many different reasons, you know, mm. because I, I do, as I sit here too, I mean, um, I, I'm thankful to be out of it, but it's also taught me many things. Yeah. And I, you know, um, yeah, if anything, it's given me more of a appreciation for people that are passionate mm. and really believe it. And I'm not one to sit and beat up anyone because I won't and I yeah. never have. But I think it's just something that, you know, no. you, you're right, they don't know or that, you know, if they're not that, I guess, studied in it. They don't, right. you know, it's like they don't study that much. And um, I, I, I did that a lot. You know, I just studied, studied, read, studied, read, you know. So I was going to ask, yeah. when, when does Jen come into the picture? Now, you're a Mormon, an active Mormon at this point. No, no, no. I've, I've, I've been away from it now for probably a couple years. Right, no, no, I yeah. know that. But yeah. I mean, as a, a, when did Jen come into your picture? Well, so, we're going to meet her next. But, I met her. I met her. Uh, it's probably been about a little over a year and a half ago. Oh, so you'd you'd actually exited the church? Yeah, I exited. Everything. I exited by myself. Oh, okay. Actually, the the time I exited. Um, so I had, what really happened then to get you out of the church? I I just I think I didn't wasn't getting the answers I wanted, or searching about like, about, about like, nobody. I didn't feel like I could get a straight answer. You know, like about like theology. Theology. Just different you know, I think instead of giving me, I mean, if they would study, I just got kind of more like, well, this is what, you know, this prophet said or, you know, this apostle said, you know. I just kind of got things that were. So was it, I mean, like polygamy or the blacks or Book well, of Abraham? Or I didn't really like, yeah, but when I, when the more nothing I studied. Nothing specific. I nothing guess. really specific. Yeah, okay. I just think I, I knew it wasn't for me. I had a, a love for people and I had some friendships there. That I that I knew it's like I didn't want to I don't want to lose him by leaving, but I also couldn't stand something I did not feel it was for me, yeah. and really did not feel that it was representing the same God slash Jesus. So it was a comparison, you know? maybe in your own mind at least somewhere that yeah. this isn't the same gospel of Jesus Christ no. that I grew right. up, grown up with and right. that I knew and understood from the Bible. Right, right, and I you know I, and I just I guess it was. Uh, I just couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. I think it just come. I just couldn't do it now, anymore. Did you eventually talk to your folks about that? <laughs> no, no, no. Did they I mean, ever know what happened to you? No, not really. I think <clears throat> one in that part of my life was very, very kind of just rough, dark part of my life, mm -hmm. and I think that's something that I've never really spoke with anyone about. You know, I mean, just those those areas I went, and so it just made me kind of, yeah. you know, I I just I, I kind of done things on my own. I've always been kind of a loner in a way, so I just did things on my own, and I just did what I thought. Was right. Well, did you ever have a born again experience, or did you, something that at some point, and whether this was during Christian or yeah, I mean, after, people have asked me that, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess if if you want to call it born again experience, I you know, I it can or be called, something that made you yeah. look differently. At, um, I think yeah, it was it was it was you know many years ago. Yeah, and I think it was a certain part of my life where it was a rough part of my life too, and. I remember I just, you know, I have had, just had to kind of cry out to God, to God, and say, I, you know, I can't do this, yeah. and because uh, if I'm going to do it, it's going to, you know, I'm on, a, it's like a train wreck, you know, yeah. it's going to end really bad, and so I, you know, that I need you, you know, yeah. I cannot do this, and 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 I, I don't want to do it without you, and so yeah, I can. That's awesome. Yeah. To have that. At least you had that foundation and anchor, yeah. because yeah. so many that leave Mormonism. Have you experienced this too or seen it mm -hmm. where, where they become agnostic? They don't, yes. Or atheist yes. even. They yes. don't have an anchor in Jesus. They no. just have it in the only true church. Right, They, they find right. out the only true church isn't true. And, that, yeah, you're yeah. right. And I don't know. I've, I've, I, I don't know. I learned a lot from it. I uh, met a lot of great people. Yeah. I really did. And so I know it wasn't for me. And, you know, um, I guess I would say to people that are still seeking, you know, whether you were born into it or you're converts in your life, you know, you've had other kind of uh, church experience, you know, yeah. just really pray about it and not give up, you know, and Hold just keep... the Bible? Yeah, music. just, yeah, study your Bible and yeah. and just try to, I guess, seek wise counsel. And uh, through that whole period, I did, I did have one friend that I met that was, wasn't uh, Mormon, and he was kind of a good wise counsel for me in a way too. So that was kind of like if you find somebody you can really trust and talk. And and he he knew that he knew that I was you know LDS, yeah. um, but not condemning and just talk to me. And you know we spent time hours in the Bible together. Yeah. And so 
Just find someone you can trust. Was like there that. any really funny things that you learned about Mormonism? I mean, we've mentioned a yeah. couple, but funny things that you thought, "Wow, how do these?" I mean, I appreciate the fact that they do believe, but yeah. boy, that you've really got to be not thinking too critically to to buy into that one. Maybe just becoming a god is a big one, right? <laughs> that's that's a big one. I don't yeah. know. I remember one time somebody seen me. Uh, I, I I cut. I was cutting my yard on a Sunday afternoon, and someone oh, seen me that I knew. Sabbath yeah, and, and they, they kind of said, got out, it was like, come over and see me, you know, to visit me or something. And, I, and they're like, what? Darren kind of, you know, and I'm like, what? I, you know, I was, I was, you know, that was kind of funny to me. Then maybe not, but I was just like, I was just cutting my cutting my yard for the week, you know, and, and so that I was not on <clears> Sunday, not on Sunday, <laughs> right? And I found that kind of funny, you know, I yeah. was just like, it, I didn't think twice about it, but yeah. I guess it bothered them, but. That gave me a chuckle for quite a while. Oh. Yeah. Well, we kind of touched a little bit with Jen, so eventually you married yes, Jen and I did. meet her, and she's L LDS, and we'll meet her next week. Was yes. she active LDS when you met? No, no, she's been so out for several spoil years. Her story, yeah, but, uh, yeah. No, she wasn't. But we, when I told her kind of mine, and then we were kind of comparing notes of like our church or religion. Interesting notes. that you had come together. It was. It was yeah, Mormons, it was. So. It was really kind of awesome, and so we both have had many hours of discussions about. All sorts of different. And have you things. learned more and more? Do you know more about Mormonism now than yes. you probably did when you were Mormon? Yes. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. It? Totally. Yeah. Totally. And you know. Do you think the missionaries are a little? I don't want to call it deceptive, but are yes. they, is it just uh, what, what words would you use to Decept describe? Deceptive is good. I, mean, you I know. Hate I, to be I, so I hate, bold. Yes. And, yeah. But I think I was told a lot of things that after I kind of got in and you know when I was it, meeting members yeah. and kind of got in a little bit deeper in a way yeah. that wasn't necessarily. What I was told initially. I really think uh, converts would have a hard time being reten re retained, you yeah. know, because yeah. when you're born in it, you're kind of brainwashed from, from yeah. youth up. It's yeah. harder to leave. Yeah. But a convert's looking at this thinking, wow, the more I learn, the more I think this is really strange. Yeah, when you have the missionaries, you know, yeah. they come and go a lot. So, hey, and I know. know you're coming up here to, maybe, I don't know if we should say that, but coming yeah. up here and... and uh, I hope we can fellowship with you. Yes, find, absolutely. Find a church with you and we yes. can share that uh, that together. That would be awesome. And isn't it wonderful, though? Do you feel a, I felt a great burden lifted. Uh, yes. I felt a bondage in Mormonism. You yeah. were in, only in it a few, little while, but do yeah. you feel that, too? Yes, bondage is a perfect word. And I remember saying that out loud, you know, by myself before. I'm like, this is bondage. Yeah. You know, if I've never if I've never felt bondage before, I've felt it now. And it was like, just like spiritual and bondage. the difference between the two. Well, yes. Darren, thanks so much for Thank coming Thank you, Earl. Up. I appreciate I, it. I appreciate and your time. Thank you. delightful. Yes. So we appreciate you watching, and uh, I haven't said it for a while, but I want you to remember you're following the gospel of Joseph Smith, not the gospel mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. So get into the Bible. Start reading John and, uh, and get a testimony. See you later. Okay.